Hi, I'm David Peterson with Best Rest Products. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to change your own tire, to spoon a tire off the rim and back on the rim. We also showed how to break the bead using the tire iron bead breaker. That's in another segment. When we did that segment, we were working on a table. Uh, it's a little awkward to do that changing on a table, so I've moved it down here to the ground. In the field, I would normally be working on the tire changing mat. That's the three foot by three foot cloth that keeps everything neat and organized. Keeps my tools organized with the pouch, the Velcro pouch, and it keeps things from getting lost. But for the photographer, we put it on a white background because it would be easier for you to see what we're doing. We've broken the bead on this tubeless tire. This is off a of BMW 1200. All the way around on both sides using the tire iron bead breaker. Now we disassemble the bead breaker and we get the tire irons needed to make this tire change. Three irons. One of the most important things to changing tires is to have proper lubrication. We make a product called Bead Goop. It's the slipperiest stuff we've ever found. In fact, it's so slippery that I'll have to stop and wipe my hands because I won't be able to hang on to the tire irons. But the first thing we do is we spread a generous bead of Bead Goop all the way around that tire. And then we use our fingers to get it in between the rubber and rim. And since I'm doing it on that side, I'll also take a moment and do it on this side. There's enough bead goop in this bottle for about two tire changes, maybe three. You can always dilute it. I like to use it full strength. Again, the key is to make sure that you get lube between that side wall and the metal rim. The rubber has to slip on the metal. The other key to changing a tire is you have to encourage this side of the tire to move that direction because the rubber bead can't make it off the rim unless it moves that direction in relation to the metal rim. How do we do that? We crush it with our knees like this. I just kneel on it and then I work on the opposite side I'm always working opposite where my knees are. Valve stem is off to the side. Using one of the, the tire irons, I hook into the tire and bring it over. You can put the tire iron like this if you want to against the rotor. Shouldn't hurt the rotor. Just be careful if it slips off it can snap upwards. And then I just start leapfrogging my irons, working my way around. That side is done. That's the easy side. The next side has to go off the rim in that direction. So we've got to get it over the rim. We've got to make sure that it's lubricated properly. Uh, in the bead breaker it'll show you instructions on how to do that best. What I like to do is take bead goop Put it in the cup of my hand in this fashion, reach up inside and put it on the back side of the metal. Like that. So I'm reaching up inside and I'm lubricating the back side of the rim.
then where I've lubricated. I then take a tire iron and I slip it between the rim and the tire at an angle in that fashion and it'll almost lock in place just like this. My technique then is to turn the tire away from me and pull. I pull the irons towards me just like that. Then I stand, put my knee on the tire, and off we come. Simple as that. First time through, a little more difficult. Once you've seen it on the video, it will help. Once you've done it in the field, you'll become a professional. Tire changing is no longer a mystery. Okay, so we just demonstrated how easy it is to remove the tire from the rim. Now we're going to put the tire back on the rim. This can be a new tire, or it can be a tire that you've repaired, or you've put a tube inside. Once again, the key ingredient is lubricating the rim properly. And the other thing is, we have to look on the sidewall of the tire to see the direction of rotation. In this case, I see the direction of rotation. I have confirmed which way the wheel assembly is going to turn. I don't want to put the tire on backwards. Once I've confirmed that, once again, I'm going to lube up the side wall of the tire. Not up in here, but more along this area where the bead is. And I'll do it on both sides since it's easy to work with right now. Slippery is good. And since I'm doing that, I'll also put some on the rim itself, both the top and the bottom. Okay. I'm going to put the first side on. You always start where your knees are. So I start here and I get it started down at that position. Often you can push this on without any tools at all. Ah, it worked. If it didn't work and I couldn't get this portion up here, I would use a tire iron to help spoon it over. I have to keep wiping my hands because bead goop is super slippery. You may find that a pair of leather or rubber gloves is handy at this point. Remember me talking about making room so that I can work up here. I get the, the rim of the tire into the well. Well, it's true on this side too. I've got to get it started. and I kneel on it. Now it's just a matter of working around the tire on both sides. Properly lubricated it goes on very easily. I keep leapfrogging my tire irons I move my knees up there. One more.
tire is back on the rim, we're ready to start inflating, and we'll see you on the trail.